this video for us should be quick, which should tell you something about the results. We are talking about AMD's Pro Mode versus Gaming Mode for the new Vega Frontier Edition video card, which has a driver package that has a button that says Gaming Mode, but it defaults to Pro Mode. Theoretically, one versus the other would provide some kind of different performance. At least that is what the commentary online would lead you to believe, including some comments that uh, perhaps spec view perf might perform better with pro mode versus gaming mode. We ran our tests on pro mode, but it's easy enough to verify and run them on gaming mode as well. And further, uh, there are some suggestions that video games might play better with gaming mode. So we're talking about all that. We're going to put all that to rest. There will be a few charts, but the data is so consistent that there doesn't need to be a lot of them. And that at the, at the end of the video, I'll give you some more uh, opinions and commentary to, to at least add something other than some simple data points. But before that, this is brought to you by our Patreon backers at patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thank you to those of you who help us there. You can join our community Discord by supporting us on Patreon, where we have a chat that I hang out in most of the day. So check that out or go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt if you want to support us that way instead. Our initial round of testing for the review and the follow-up round for the clock-for-clock -clock benchmarking of Fury X versus Vega used the, we'll call it, appropriate driver mode for each set of tasks. So the professional production applications were in pro mode and likewise games were in game mode. Now, we're toggling between them for these benchmark numbers. A quick note here, the immediate difference between switching modes is a UI change. It basically, Pro Mode is a slightly changed version of Radeon settings. If you have an AMD card, you probably know what Radeon settings looks like. The gaming mode is identical to that, including Wattman, including Radeon Chill, uh, and really every other tab on that page. Pro Mode removes Wattman, but you can still overclock. You just have to do it with a third-party application. So Wattman is removed from the interface. It's still installed. They just take the button off the interface, and I believe Radeon Chill is also removed from the interface with Pro Mode enabled. So that's the immediate visible difference. Uh, it is a UI change. Other than this, the implicit change would be that there is some form of impact to your performance in either task, gaming production, and that seems to be a common thread with some of the discussion online. And when we were speaking with AMD's representatives, the word that we received led us to believe that there would in fact be a difference. Hence, we benchmarked everything for the review in the appropriate mode, thinking that it might actually matter and that it would be the most realistic use case uh, to do that way for each user group. So, full testing methodology is in the article below as always, but it's, it's really pretty simple. We toggle the modes. <laughs> Starting with production first, as that's the easiest to demonstrate, we end up with the numbers on the screen now. Notice that there are some error bars which indicate that the range of test to test variants basically accounts for any differences here. Taking these into account, everything is equal, not effectively equal, but equal, and there's no clear performance leader in either mode. There's no pattern which mode holds the marginal within error differences, and because there's no pattern and there is no clear winner, that means that all the tests are within variant and can be declared as equal. That was easy. Let's get the fire strike. With Firestrike Ultra, the difference is 6.5 points in the graphics score. 0.1% different. We're at 4936.5 points after five averaged automated run for the gaming mode card and 4930 points after the same run count on the pro mode card. If we look at the represented FPS number instead of the scores, the difference looks even less significant. It's 0%. We're at 25.5 versus 25.5 for graphics FPS 1, and 18.5 versus 18.5 for graphics FPS 2. In fact, if we update the chart and include two significant figures, or digits after the decimal, there's now a difference. 25.51 versus 25.45, and 18.53 versus 18.52. So that's not exciting. Next chart, with Time Spy, we're seeing a difference in FPS of 0.335 frames per second for graphics 1. 0.535 frames per second for graphics 2 after five average test passes automatically executed with the program closed in between. These two are identical in performance. We technically have more Firestrike results, but it's boring. So we're going to move on to games because they Firestrike Extreme and Firestrike 1080p, same thing. They're, the, the results are the same. 
So let's move on to For Honor next. With For Honor at 4K and extreme settings, we're seeing a performance difference of 0 FPS average and less than 1 FPS in our frame time values, or the frame times represented as the percentage values. The frame times and the frame rate are all the same. For Honor at 1080p is also the same as you can see in this 1080p chart, where we see differences of around 1 FPS at most between the pro and gaming modes. Metro Last Light at 4K posts a difference of... 0 FPS. We're at 47 FPS on both devices, with lows basically the same. 1080p is also basically the same. Less than 1 FPS difference between the modes, and that difference, again, doesn't have a pattern. So it's within variance, and if we ran the test 100 more times, they'd probably be basically equal anyway. Finally, Ashes of the Singularity with DirectX 12 shows more of the same. Our numbers are basically tied here. There's no significant difference between the two driver modes with Ashes of the Singularity even with DirectX 12. We have more data. We have data on Sniper Elite and on GTA and a couple of other games. I'm going to save you the time of watching and me the time of making the charts and tell you that they're all the same. <laughs> and uh, other than that, we're basically left with two modes that show no difference. It's sort of frustrating because AMD's uh, marketing materials and representatives intentionally or not led us to believe that there would actually be a difference that was significant in some form. Whether or not it was 20% versus 5%, either one is significant. 0% is not significant. So a little bit frustrating there. And the reason why is because if this is the ultimate goal with game mode versus pro mode, if this is the end game for AMD, it's almost insulting to the professional end user because they receive the card and they can turn on Pro mode so that they can use Premiere or Blender or CAD software or whatever it may be, all that does is take away overclocking, one would assume so that they don't hurt themselves by mistake or something like that. Otherwise, why? Uh, I, overclocking, sure, probably not too common in that kind of use case, but also why take it away? You're just adding driver complexity to a driver package which is clearly already very buggy. Wattman doesn't even overclock correctly. It downclocks HBM if you, ch if you downclock the core or overclock the core or really change anything. So Wattman's already buggy enough. AMD, you guys have enough to fix. There's no point in adding a button that flashes the screen black to make you feel like something has happened and then removes Wattman and I guess Radeon Chill. That's what this comes down to. It does nothing. And here's the thing, if, if that's the goal, it's a gimmick. If that's not the goal, and AMD plans to do more with game mode and pro mode, for example, incorporate whatever driver updates they may have for games in the future, maybe that launch with RX Vega, maybe they improve gaming performance and those aren't included for whatever reason when pro mode is turned on. If that's the goal, now we're talking about something useful, but it shows that this driver package was fully unready to launch with the Vega Frontier Edition. I mean, we were, were pretty, pretty neutral and didn't share too much of an opinion in the Vega review, didn't share too much of an opinion in some of the other content, but the opinion is here, and the opinion is the driver package was not ready. That's clear from looking at this. Either pro mode and game mode do something or they don't. If they don't, it's stupid and pointless. If they do, it wasn't ready. Uh, end of story as far as that goes. This is nothing more than a psychological switch to make you feel like your graphics card is doing something better than it actually is. Uh, so we've tested it enough to feel confident in that the games show no difference. The production applications just through spec B perf show no difference. We did not retest Blender because we're having enough problems with Blender and Vega drivers already. I know the Blender team pushed patches, but they're not perfect. It still crashes with certain types of materials or effects that you can render in that application. So uh, we are not seeing a difference. If someone is seeing a difference, I would love to hear about it so that I can test that same application and that same use case and report it and tell you all about how great the two modes are. But as it stands now, from our testing today, no difference. So thank you for watching. As always, you can subscribe for more. Patreon.com slash GamersNexus to help us out directly. Store.GamersNexus.net for shirts. And we will have more Vega coverage going up. If you missed the review, go watch it. It is pretty straightforward, straight shooter, neutral review. 
goes over all the details and then tells you why you should not speculate about RX Vega's performance because it's too soon to call, and then come back for the RX Vega review. I'll see you all next time.